Fire now, Mr. Kyle. Five. Four. Yo, Star Trekkers, here we are, another month, another arc. Introducing, ladies and gents, M28, the third and final arc of the original series of Star Trek. I'm your host of the Talking Trek podcast, Ultimate DJs here with our infamous arc introduction video, jam-packed full of stuff for you. So buckle up and let's get started. First, thank you to our video executive producer, Snake Eyes, for putting this whole wham-bam shamalam all together for you in a nice visual package so you can see it. You can close your eyes and listen. You can open your eyes and see. Please like the video or at least, you know, maybe remember to like it later. But you know, now is now is fine too. Also, subscribe to the channel because that's important and be sure to click the bell, leave your comments below so we can answer those as the day goes along. First guys, let's dive into the brand new officers like we always do. We'll take a glance at two brand new rare officers, both from the original series and both kind of expected, right? First, Montgomery Scott, Captain's Ability. Awesome, actually increasing the warp range of explorers by a range of four. Uh, we can see that that's in green, so at least that's expandable with Synergy. We'll explore that in a moment. His officer ability, increasing repair cost efficiency of the ship he's on by 20%. This one actually isn't that bad, but not a combat type ability like we're used to seeing out of most new officers. Taking a look at his Synergy card here from L Cars 2.0, shout out, we see potential maximum Synergy of six total, making this a maximum ability of 10 warp range but let's utilize a previous officer maybe cadet scotty on the side and you could actually get a bump of 12 warp range out of this particular officer set by getting four primarily then three more off one side of double bar synergy and then five more off cadet scotty you can actually get a warp boost of 12. now this is only good on explorers which is disappointing right can't use it on survey ships or can you? How about the USS Discovery? Yeah, that's right. Being an explorer and then summoning a ship. Uh, for some of you, now expanding your reach into unexplored areas of space, whether it be mining, exploration, missions, whatever. This officer, absolutely awesome for exploration. Not so great for PvP, nor did we expect it to be. Next, Ah, oh, yes, finally, Chekhov is in the game, everybody. Chekhov is here. Let's glimpse the video. Captain's Maneuver, increasing impulse speeds of explorers by 10. Two very enterprise-friendly officers uh, on explorers. I don't know. Uh, is it uh, perhaps another decent officer for using overpowered ships for minor hunting? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe. Let's look at the officer ability, though, see if there's anything in there. Security plans. Offering players an ability to decrease opponent's weapons damage by 50% if the player is attacked by a player on a capture node or a mining node. Now, this kind of lends itself to pairing him up with maybe the epic TOS Spock and TOS Bones for defensive opportunities in PvP and territory capture. Doesn't seem at first glance, uh, first glance to be wildly stellar, but testing is going to be needed to see how he performs with the other officers in his synergy set for defensive PvP. Now, we got a lot of other stuff to tell you about. Tons of items. Let's keep going. Leading up to this arc, we hinted at a few things, including one hint that a roadmap item would be introduced into this arc. Now, <laughs> some information was leaked accidentally early when players saw this screenshot incorrectly relabeling some research to look like skin-related research. <laughs> but players were both horrified and disgusted that skins would be locked till such a late level. Then it was revealed this was only an error because this, in fact, was the real tree. Just the labels were wrong. You can see the structure was the same. Here's looking at this screenshot. But the researchers just had their names changed. At first, moderators and content creators were coy, stating, this was clearly an error, but does indicate Scopely is at least working on these items. This messaging leaned towards away missions coming into the game, but 
The misdirection seemed to have been mildly effective as the discussion on skins died down quickly. Well, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, introducing the first wave of ship customization, cosmetic refits into the game. And unlike much of the conversation over the last few days, weeks, and months, these cosmetics actually serve a purpose. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, these refits, as we're calling them, do contain within them an actual utility buff to the ships that they belong to. Taking a quick peek at this developer video, we can see two categories, ship skins and projectiles. Let's briefly, uh, very briefly, we have a much more comprehensive video on these refits actually coming in a few hours, but I'm gonna give you a sneak peek right now and we'll show off uh, maybe an image or two. We can see that these skins are specifically designed for specific ships. This seems to indicate that there could be abilities that actually tie them to the underlying ship uh, underneath the skin. For example, uh, we see them doubling up for the ships. Uh, this arc, for example, we're gonna see ships that only deal with G3 and G4 epics. So I'm sorry, 33 and down, you have something to look forward to. But like avatars and frames, when they first came out, we all talked about how terrible they were, but now, there are dozens of avatars and dozens of frames in the game, and they actually are getting better each and every arc. So eventually, players, I'm sure you're going to see more and more and more of these skins being introduced into the game. And golly, think about it. We've all talked in the community about how expensive it would be now that the entire CBS library is available to Scopely. How crazy would it be for dozens of ships to be introduced into this game, all costing Tritanium and Dilithium and Uncommon Materials, or even worse, <gasps> new currencies. Yeah, we don't want that, okay? However, Scopely has actually designed it such a way, like avatars, like frames, that now we can literally see dozens of new ships in the game without breaking our pocketbooks, our wallets on upgrading and using brand new ships. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Scopely's answer to incorporating dozens of ships over the coming year. And it's right here with ship customizations and ship skins coming in so that we can actually see new ships, okay? An actual utility contained inside them as well, and that is super duper exciting. So for this arc, sorry for the lower level players, these ships start with Ops 34 and go up, but rest assured, throughout the year, we will be seeing more. All right, for example, the TOS Enterprise for this arc, the original series Enterprise, being used for both the Kelvin G3 Enterprise as well as the G4 Enterprise A. A Klingon D7 for the Klingon D4 and the Hegda, and a Bird of Prey for the Augur and the Tribune. Also down here, we see a quick glance of the Constellation skin for the ISS Jellyfish. Peeking at these projectiles, we see three new weapons designs as well. Now, the weapons designs are purely cosmetic and will kind of just be for fun, but the skins will each serve a purpose. Let's glance at one of the most important skins, I think, and that's the USS Constellation for the Black ISS Jellyfish. Notice the beautiful artwork here, okay? Just absolutely gorgeous. But over here on the right-hand side, also look at that buff. A 50% boost to the ability of the jelly against hostiles. Holy cow. Folks, the jelly's ability, in case you had forgotten, is a stacking damage boost per round against hostiles. Adding 50% to these numbers should be massively, massively valuable and definitely deserving of the title of Epic as far as this refit is concerned. We're gonna dive into this more in a few hours, but this ties into our hint. Uh, of Capital City Systems provided on the podcast just days ago. <laughs> More about that later, but yes, for now, suffice to say, you get the new ship without having to build and pay to upgrade a brand new ship. Also, tying to our hint of no new ships for this art, because technically it's not a ship, it's a refit. Uh, <laughs> Let's, let's show upgrading the jelly with this refit. Uh, nice little UI upgrade here uh, to add this refit. Man, the art is absolutely beautiful. Just gorgeous. This refit, or skin, was supremely well designed. Here's a few quick glances at the other skins. The new original series Enterprise. Next, the Romulan Bird of Prey. And finally, the Klingon 
D7. Really nicely done on the art here. All of these refits have PvE based buffs that are always active upon their unlock meaning you don't have to use this skin if you don't like it but you may still want to consider unlocking it because that's going to give you the buff permanently on your account we're going to go over these buffs in more detail in our next video refits are going to be available to unlock through various leaderboard events and redemption chests throughout the arc we'll talk to you more about that later now let's discuss a few other things coming throughout the arc this one uh first maybe not even an arc related item but finally scopely enacting uh an item off the public's wish list introducing everybody the latinum instant repair confirmation button Yes, finally. On any repair costing more than 100 Latinum, you're now going to get a pop-up confirmation of spending that much Latinum so you can tell the system, heck no, get your own up out of here. I don't need you here. No, I didn't mean to click you. I, no, no, I did not want to spend 500,000 Latinum repairing that Newton. Mm -mm -mm. No, sir. I definitely didn't want to spend uh, 16,000 Latinum preparing that Sally. Nope, nope, nope. Get on out of here. That one's quick. All right. But probably one of the larger wins of this maintenance update. Also, you're going to notice changes to the power and statistics listed on your officers when they're not in the ship, but just in the carousel. Yes, officers. Finally, their strength is going to have their stats boosted by the academy and research uh, when even when not on a ship. Uh, in most cases, they're going to match the strength that, the, that they would be on a ship. Unless, of course, you've got an officer that boosts stats, making it easier to see officers like TOS Bones, maybe, uh, whether or not they're actually passive or in battle only. Also, we got a whole list of bug fixes, including the blank billboard space, graphical errors with the placement of second builder cues. Finally, for some of those who have messaged me with your Romulan rep events getting, like, stuck at weird levels, got that fixed, too. Officer Kabish and his defensive mining, uh, mining ability is fixed and several other bugs that I shall not discuss here, but a good bugs list, actually. I was actually really happy with the bugs addressed in this sprint, including maybe the biggest headache for Scopely here lately. <clears throat> Quote, Battle Pass season milestones failing to update after changes made on the server side. Corrected. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about you, four-star rare gas. <laughs> or, or, or you, event tickets. <laughs> now they're actually going to be fixed in real time uh, when a change is made on the server side. Speaking of event tickets, they do make their return this arc, and as promised, the currency remains the same. So your leftover tickets from last month will be able to be used this month as promised. But is it in the exact same 13 days with 39 events? No, it isn't. Nope, nope, nope. And they told us it wouldn't be, even last month. This month, it's a little bit different. We're going to see these ticketed events being incorporated into Doomsday-related events, but this time, based on your ops level, you will see varying numbers of available events. For example, last month, we saw three per day, 13 days, 39 events. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. All right, this month, you're going to see a minimum of three, but depending on your ops level, you could see more. Potentially, on some days, spending up to 50 tickets per day. Oh, boy, some of you are going to be busy, busy. Bye-bye, leftovers. All right, the exact number of possible events is going to depend on your ops level. And you just sit tight and stay tuned because we will have those numbers for you soon, either here or in our Talking Trek podcast. These events, like last month, are going to provide you with various prizes and rewards and... You guessed it. I did earlier say that this was the third and final arc of the original series. So that means what class? Yes, you got it. An event store will be open this month. You'll have a chance to earn event store currency and progress towards those ship refits and projectiles. And of course, it wouldn't be a seasonal arc without the introduction of new armadas, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Doomsday armadas are here and will utilize some of the new systems introduced last month. These Dumatas will scale in rarity between Uncommon, Rare, and Epic, and there's going to be a few events surrounding damaging these Dumatas, and in each turn, earning Doomsday trophies, salvage parts for your TOS store, and event store currency. Like Mudmatas, these 
Doom modders will take a specialized Doomsday directive that will be sourced throughout the events or made available for direct purchase if you just need oodles and oodles of them. This arc presents all kinds of new and interesting hooks, including a brand new planet killer event with a new scoring metric of receiving damage. What? Yes, you <laughs> Yes, you will be required to use lower leveled ships, but the points you earn is going to be based on the damage you take. So, how would you maximize the points you earn in an event like this? By using a ship just strong enough to beat the enemy target, but weak enough to take a whole boatload of damage. Dust off those sallies, people. Scrape out those bordices. The Mayflowers are back and will dominate. This one's going to be interesting, all right? Plus, we're also going to celebrate the return of the PvP-PvE hybrid event, but even this event will have a unique scoring metric in that it's no longer based on damage inflicted upon your enemies, but rather a brand new, unique for this event scoring metric. We're going to leave this one to your imagination for a little bit, but yes, hold on to your hats, folks. This one is going to blow people's minds. We're calling it Plunders of Wars, and we'll tell you more about it coming up very, very soon. Folks, I'm going to wrap up right here. We have so much more to tell you about, but in due time. Don't forget, we've got a new video coming up right here on launch day in just a few more hours to tell you more about these buffs from the ship cosmetics and not only how they're being earned, but how you can use them and how effective these buffs will be. Please scroll down after the video. Leave your comments in the magic comment section below and be sure to give us a big old thumbs up and click that subscribe button before you leave most importantly share this video with your teammates and players on your server let's spread as much info out there as we can about this new and final tos seasonal arc my name is ultimate djs thank you for watching we'll see you on the next one love you minute see you later bye, -bye.